Working with a financial advisor is not the right choice for everybody, but if you do decide to get some help with financial planning or managing investments, how much does it cost and what are your options for paying? That's what we're going to talk about in the next couple of minutes here. I'm of course biased, but it can be helpful in some situations to get some guidance as you navigate major life changes or if you just decide you want a second set of eyes or you don't want to deal with these things yourself. Let's briefly go over when it makes sense to hire an advisor and then we'll look at some studies in terms of how much advisors charge their clients and we'll quickly review the different compensation models available for clients. The only time it makes sense to hire somebody is if you actually get some value out of the relationship and that might be something like just saving time. You can certainly figure all of this out yourself. You're smart enough, but if you choose to have somebody else handle these things for you, that's one reason to hire somebody. You might also just want a second set of eyes on things and an advisor who does this every day might be able to point out something that you could potentially tweak and improve your financial plan with. You might want help dealing with the logistics. So sometimes that's just the paperwork or figuring out what it takes to get this task done. It's really important, but not much fun. And it doesn't feel urgent like it needs to be done yesterday. You can actually take care of it quit thinking about it and go on to more important things in life. It's also nice to have an outside perspective sometimes. We get wrapped up in these decisions. We all do because we're human. And sometimes that outside view of things can give you a different way of looking at it and help you discern what matters most, what doesn't matter most, and just kind of talk through things with you so that you can make a decision that benefits you the most. And for some clients I work with, they just want a second set of eyes on things. They've got it pretty well figured out, but they want to run it past somebody and just validate. We'll talk about a couple of different types of advisors, but the thing that's most important is that you get somebody who is competent and really cares about helping you figure things out and make the right decisions given your situation. If you end up talking to somebody who gets evasive or doesn't want to talk about how much things cost or go into their background or anything like that, that's kind of a red flag that you might want to keep looking. But if you've got somebody who is completely transparent about how much they're making, how much you're paying, then that's a good sign. So let's get into the two types of advisor compensation. We can broadly categorize this as fee only or commission. And I'll just let you know that I might have some biases because I am a fee only advisor, but we're gonna go over the two major categories of compensation models here. So a fee only advisor cannot receive commissions for work they do with clients. Instead, they might charge some flat fees or hourly fees, and we're gonna talk about some research on how much exactly advisors charge, but they don't get a commission for selling a product, they just charge a fee, and they typically tell you what that is up front, send you an invoice, and you see what the fee is as you pay it. In some cases, you're working with these advisors on an ongoing basis, maybe year by year, that sort of thing, or in other cases, you might work with an advisor on a one-time basis. So it might just be a project where you have them uh, help you out, put a second set of eyes on things, or do some retirement projections for you. Those are all different options. You also can choose if you want your financial advisor or financial planner to manage investments for you. So some advisors will require that you have money with them that they manage, and they typically bill you on those assets, not always. Other advisors might say, you don't have to hand me assets. We can just work together again on that hourly or that flat fee basis. It just depends on the advisor and everybody's all over the board in terms of what they're willing to do and what they require. Next, you have commission advisors. And these are people who earn a commission when you buy a product. So that might be if you invest money into a product like a mutual fund or a REIT, a real estate investment trust, or an insurance product like an annuity, that sort of thing, they get a commission when you do that. Those commissions are typically paid to the advisor up front, but there might be some ongoing what's called trail compensation 
that comes each year after the initial sale. Before I go any further, just a quick reminder that this is just a short video and it gives you a high level overview of things, but please speak with a professional, get somebody to talk to you who is familiar with your details and get some professional advice. That way you reduce the chances of any problems. So how much exactly do financial advisors charge? And right now we're looking at fee only financial advisors. And so I got some information from a couple of different sources, uh, primarily Kitz's and Bob Veer's uh, surveys where they ask advisors, how much are you charging among many other things? But again, wanna say that the results are all over the board. And when you actually talk with an advisor, this is where you need to get their details. But just to let you know, for a financial plan, it's anywhere from $2,500 to $3,000. That is kind of consistent among both of the studies. And that is where you would be going over a number of your personal financial topics and getting some individualized guidance. Some advisors charge what's called a retainer and it's gonna depend on who regulates the advisor, which state they're in, for example, if that's allowed. But that might be something where you're paying a monthly or an annual a fee, and that might also be on top of an initial upfront fee, but uh, Kitz's shows that the median there is about $4,000. Just a quick refresher of what the median is. That is where we take the results and we line them up from smallest to largest, and the median is going to be the one that's exactly in the middle. And even if there are some big outliers, like on the bottom of this list here, they don't necessarily skew it in the same way that an average would be. So roughly half of the advisors charge more, half of the advisors charge less, and we can't say exactly how much more or less they might charge. So again, you have to talk with an advisor to get that information. Some advisors publish their pricing on their website. That's certainly helpful as you do some research. Now let's look at hourly charges, and you can see that it's roughly in the $250 to $300 per hour range for an experienced advisor. When we get into AUM or assets under management, this is typically where an advisor is going to be managing your money for you. So they're picking what to buy and sell and when, and they're just doing everything in your account, not necessarily needing your involvement. So it's a hands-off way to invest with an investment advisor. The typical fee there is gonna be 1% per year on the first million dollars and then it typically goes down as your assets increase after that but again pricing is all over the board and there are also some flat fee models available so an investment advisor might say i'm just going to charge you x amount per year for managing whatever amount of money it is it might be four thousand dollars per year ten thousand dollars twenty thousand it just depends on a lot of different things including how much you have, what services they're providing, and many other things. In most cases, that AUM fee comes out of your account directly, so you don't typically write a check, although that option is often available. What usually happens is each quarter, they take a quarter of that fee. So if it's a 1% per year fee, the advisor might take one quarter of 1% each quarter, and that way, they end up getting compensated throughout the year. And then if you leave at any point, then you stop paying those fees, of course. Besides those major models that we just talked about, there are a number of other options out there that are growing in popularity. So some of them look at your income, for example, or your net worth, and it might be some percentage based on that, one or 2% of your total income and or your net worth, uh, or they're just based on the complexity of what you have going on. Are you married or not? Do you have a business or not? Do you have these other factors or not? Then an advisor can figure out what the pricing model is going to be, and then they typically tell you that up front. Now let's take a look at commission advisors and with mutual funds this is kind of a traditional advisor that sells mutual funds. It's usually up to 5.75 percent up front comes out of your investment. So for every $100 you put in $5.75 would come out of what you invest and that does not go into the market that goes over to 
the broker dealer firm typically and then some portion of that goes over to the advisor that's what's called an a share class a share but other classes are out there and some of them maybe aren't out there as much as they used to be but some of them might charge one percent up front and you don't necessarily have that come out of your investment but it goes to the advisor and if you happen to leave within a year you would be paying that one percent it there are just lots of different uh, options out there that might or might not still be in the world when you invest with these mutual fund shares there might also be what's called a trail compensation so for a class a share that pays that 5.75 percent or less you know the more you invest with that fund company that decreases but those typically pay 0.25 percent or a quarter percent per year to the advisor on an ongoing basis so that gives them a little bit of revenue ongoing uh, after that initial upfront commission. With stock trades, I'll just touch briefly on it because I don't see it that often, but I think it's probably still out there. And traditionally, it would be 1% to 2% of the amount you're trading is what the broker would charge as a commission, probably on the lower end these days. Uh, just a, a way of doing it if they're going to just trade stocks or ETFs for you. Then we get into insurance products. And in this case, I'm mostly talking about annuities for investors or for retirement planning and in those cases the compensation to the advisor is baked into the product so you don't actually see a commission although a commission is almost always paid but you don't see it as a line item or a transaction so you can't tell exactly how much it is but rest assured people are getting paid the advisor is getting paid the insurance agent is getting paid and the insurance company is also getting compensation so you typically need to uh, ask how much that might be now I have an article here from the balance and that's going to show us something that's basically consistent with what I've seen in in my experience and so with variable annuities the commission might be four percent to seven percent up front and there might also be some ongoing trail commissions if you have FIA's fixed index annuities also known as equity indexed annuities those tend to pay higher commissions six to eight percent um, although if you get a really long surrender period it might be even more than eight percent so let's just say you put in a hundred thousand dollars that might be eight thousand dollars that goes to the insurance agent uh, who sells you that product um, and you know just keep in mind that surrenders might also be another form of cost if you're wondering what it costs to work with a financial advisor you do lose some flexibility in some cases using annuities if they have a surrender period and that basically means if you pull your money out early and go away with it in a lump sum that you might have to pay a fee when it comes to single premium immediate annuities this is your plain vanilla a lifetime income type of thing where you say I've got a chunk of money I want you to turn it into a stream of income that lasts let's say for the rest of my life or for 20 years uh, those are lower commissions one to three percent uh, longevity annuities get up there a little bit higher and fixed annuities uh, are also in the ballpark there so what you can see is that it kind of depends on exactly what type of annuity you buy but you're not necessarily going to know exactly what it costs you so once again you've got several options now if you found this helpful please leave a quick thumbs up and take care